Welcome to Immerse Poets Reading for Week 4, Day 16. Immersed in Proverbs The Creator intends for us to flourish in our life on this earth. There is a way of wisdom, rooted in deep respect and reverence for God Himself, that leads us to this good life. One particular literary tradition in Israel was centered on exploring and teaching this path. Today we can find it reflected in the Bible's wisdom books. The first example of this tradition is found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs does not take the form of a narrative, but its wisdom teachings are an integral part of the story of the Bible. In this book, the ancient Israelites collected wise sayings, or proverbs, to help them follow the right course in life. These proverbs are not absolute promises about what will happen in all situations, but are short, memorable sayings that offer practical advice for good living. It's a universal phenomenon for cultures to produce maxims that express their perspectives on how life is to be lived wisely. For example, we might say, Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Measure twice, cut once. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Israel's Proverbs offer such practical wisdom, but also have the incomparable advantage of being informed by the nation's experiences in its covenant relationship with God. The Proverbs in the Bible display the basic literary device found in all Hebrew poetry, parallelism. Hebrew Proverbs are usually expressed in poetic couplets, two-line compositions in which the second line echoes, contrasts, or elaborates on the first. Here are a few examples. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. Sensible children bring joy to their father. Foolish children despise their mother. Stay away from fools, for you won't find knowledge on their lips. Such proverbs are not like lyric poetry. That is, they probably weren't originally sung like the poems in Israel's songbooks. But the brevity, repetition, and imagery of the Proverbs. For example, as a door swings back and forth on its hinges, so the lazy person turns over in bed, nevertheless make them just as memorable as words set to music. The biblical book of Proverbs contains six collections of such sayings. They have been gathered from named figures, including Solomon, Agur, and Lemuel, as well as from unnamed figures known simply as the wise. To introduce these collections, the book offers a series of exhortations. Also in poetry, though in stanzas longer than couplets, praising the benefits of learning from the sages of the past by feasting on the banquet of their wisdom. The book ends with an acrostic poem following the letters of the Hebrew alphabet about a virtuous and capable wife. This may be seen as an application of the book's overall teaching to a particular person's life to offer an example of how the way of wisdom might be played out. The collected Proverbs presented throughout the book share a common vision of life. There are two paths that can be followed, that of the fool, or the wicked, and that of the wise, or the righteous. The Proverbs appeal to experience and common sense to make the case that, everything else being equal, the wise prosper in this life, enjoying financial success, health, good relationships, and a good reputation through diligence and hard work, while the foolish take shortcuts, get rich quick schemes, shady friendships, cutting corners, etc., and end up missing out. The other wisdom books in the First Testament, Ecclesiastes and Job, will add important qualifications to this view. But the place to begin the journey is with the down-to-earth advice offered in the book of Proverbs. It offers a solid presentation of wisdom rooted in a right relationship with God, seeking to follow the way that leads to a life that is truly life. The Book of Proverbs These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right 
just, and fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, turn your back on them. They may say, come and join us, let's hide and kill someone. Just for fun, let's ambush the innocent. Let's swallow them alive like the grave. Let's swallow them whole like those who go down to the pit of death. Think of the great things we'll get. We'll fill our houses with all the stuff we take. Come, throw in your lot with us. We'll all share the loot. My child, don't go along with them. Stay far away from their paths. They rush to commit evil deeds. They hurry to commit murder. If a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. But these people set an ambush for themselves. They are trying to get themselves killed. Such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of life. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. She calls to the crowds along the main street, to those gathered in front of the city gate, how long, you simpletons, will you insist on being simple-minded? How long will you mockers relish your mocking? How long will you fools hate knowledge? Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. I called you so often, but you wouldn't come. I reached out to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you when disaster overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster engulfs you like a cyclone, and anguish and distress overwhelm you. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me for they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. These men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. They take pleasure in doing wrong, and they enjoy the twisted ways of evil. Their actions are crooked, and their ways are wrong. Wisdom will save you from the immoral woman, from the seductive words of the promiscuous woman. 
she has abandoned her husband and ignores the covenant she made before God. Entering her house leads to death. It is the road to the grave. The man who visits her is doomed. He will never reach the paths of life. So follow the steps of the good and stay on the paths of the righteous. For only the godly will live in the land and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be removed from the land and the treacherous will be uprooted. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then He will fill your barns with grain, and your vats will overflow with good wine. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline, and don't be upset when He corrects you. For the Lord corrects those He loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom He delights. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, He created the heavens. By His knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth burst forth, and the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked, for the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow and then I'll help you. Don't plot harm against your neighbor, for those who live nearby trust you. Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. Don't envy violent people or copy their ways. Such wicked people are detestable to the Lord, but he offers his friendship to the godly. The Lord curses the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the upright. The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools are put to shame. This concludes today's Immerse Reading Experience. Thank you for joining us.